Hey, what's going on, everybody? My name is Scott Newhouse. I'm a certified financial planner, and today I want to talk about the only annuity strategy that I actually like, the only annuity strategy that I would ever use or even tell my clients, hey, you need to think about doing this. Um, And before we get into that, though, I know you're all here to listen to me talk about sports. My LA Clippers, they lost. I said in the last video they were going to lose. They did. Uh, we were paying, you know, for those of you not watching sports, don't know any of these names, we're paying James Harden, Paul George, Kawhi Leonard tens of millions of dollars to show up in the playoffs so we can get a deep run. Kawhi gets hurt. He's as old as I am. Um, Paul George, James Harden, they have one, maybe one and a half good games out of six. Uh, and then our best player throughout the series was this guy named Ivica Zubak. He's a role player, He's but he played great, but he's... I mean, he's not, he's like the sixth best player on our team and he played the best. And so all of our stars, you know, just didn't really show up. So we lost, it was embarrassing. And um, the only good thing is that, you know, now that I'm not going to be watching the NBA playoffs as much, I've got more time for these YouTube videos, the podcast. And so you're just going to be seeing my face more often. So that's the only good news, but uh, I'm going to try and rebound from that. So let's transition to talking about annuities um and you have probably heard me say i really don't like annuities i don't i don't love them i don't like them i don't recommend them to clients i never have i probably never will things could change um but let me talk about um two different annuity types that I really don't like and you should just definitely avoid. And then I'm going to talk about the one annuity strategy that I think actually might make some sense for some of you, but you've got to think about it and weigh the pros and cons. um, And we'll get into that in a second, but let's talk about the two annuity types I don't like. The first is the variable annuity. So it's a, it's an annuity. It's a contract, which is basically a contract with an insurance company. um, and, And this variable annuity has two phases. It has the accumulation phase. So you put some money, into this account. Um, You select the investments that the annuity company offers. It grows. um, And then when you're ready after 10 years, 20 years, whatever, then you can turn on, quote unquote, turn on the income and get an income from that annuity. And that's called the income phase. So the accumulation, accumulation phase is part one income phase is part two. Um, I really don't like this, these types of annuities though, because the guarantees that they offer you in terms of the income, they're really not that impressive. I don't think they're much actually, if any better than what you can do in a low cost stock and bond portfolio. The fees are very high in terms of uh, any commissions that are of in that contract, as well as the ongoing fees for the investments inside those accounts. And as you know, I'm a big fan of low-cost index funds, which you can get through, uh, you know, Fidelity Funds, Vanguard, uh, State Street, like you can get all of those really low cost and you don't have to pay those high expense ratios inside embedded in these contracts. Um, Another thing that I don't like is that you're locking up this money and um, they have something called a surrender period where you cannot take uh, that contract back. You can't get your money back for a period of time, maybe five to 10 years, and you can only get a small percentage out every year without having to pay some kind of penalty. And if you take it out before that surrender period, then you have to pay a penalty. And I just, I really don't want, you know, you to wrap up even more of your money in penalties when we already have retirement account restrictions. So really don't like variable annuities, never recommended them, probably never will. Uh, So I would just stay, uh, stay away from those. The other annuity type that I really don't like is a fixed indexed annuity, uh, also called an FIA. And so these are a little different in that you put the money into the account or into the annuity, and then it guarantees that your account's not going to go down. Um, and so a lot of closer to retire retirement and retirees like that because they like that their principal is going to stay the same. And then you basically pick an index or multiple indexes um, for your account to be linked to. So, and so like the S&P 500, the 500 largest companies in the US. You don't actually own the S&P 500. It's a little complex, but you're linked to the performance of that account. Um, the reason why I don't like these though is because even if you're linked to that, you're not gonna get the entire gain of the S&P 500. So for instance, you know we've had years uh, in the past where the S&P 500 got 25% returns, 30% returns, um, in a given year, if you have a FIA fixed index annuity, there's participation rates and cap rates that's going to limit how much you're going to get. So maybe if the S&P 500 is up 25% in your fixed index annuity, even if it's linked to the S&P 500, you're only going to get a 10% return or an 8% return or a 12% return. So you're going to be giving away a lot of those gains for the quote unquote guarantee 
of of not having your account balance go down like we saw in 2022 you know small medium uh, large size uh, stocks were all down international was down bonds were even down so uh, in the fixed index annuity your account would have stayed the same um, but you 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 know give up that upside potential in pretty much all of those other years that it goes up because you're only going to get a percent uh, sometimes a fraction of what the indexes are going to do on their own okay hope that makes sense also the commissions are really high uh insurance agents may not be great about disclosing how much they're going to get paid on uh, on those commissions don't love that at all um, and they also have a surrender period where you can only get a small amount out of the account in a given year and you have to wait five to ten years before you can reclaim the entire money um, and liquidity is really important in retirement and so we're going to be talking about that um, in a second with the one a strategy that i do like so those are the two types of annuities i don't like i don't recommend honestly i won't even encourage i would encourage you not to spend any of your precious time on variable annuities as well as fixed index annuities i just don't think it makes a lot of sense here's the one that might make sense and i'm not recommending this for any of my clients um, but i just don't think it's a terrible idea and I, I do think it makes sense uh okay so here's how this annuity strategy works let's say you and your spouse um you guys are married and you want to spend five thousand dollars a month in retirement so the way this strategy works is you take that five thousand and then you're going to subtract you and your spouse's social security income and i'm just making up numbers here but let's say you and your spouse uh, are going to get three thousand a month of social security so five minus three using my college degrees i got two thousand remaining that we need uh for your living expenses and what you're going to do, well, actually, let me backtrack. In the traditional approach, which is what I still recommend to clients, I still think it's the best strategy. The traditional approach says, hey, let's use your, let's use a distribution of your stock and bond portfolio to get that extra 2000 a month. Um, and then that's going to make up the 5000 that you need from your living expenses. Uh, 3000 from Social Security, 2000 from investment distributions. We're all set. Now, with this annuity approach, it's a little different because what this approach uh, approaches is you take a lump sum of money and you purchase an immediate annuity also called a single premium immediate annuity and i'm going to try and put a link um, into the show notes about spias but you can just you know type in that name and you're going to see a lot of resources on that and these annuities are basically where you give the insurance company um, a lump sum of money and it's going to give you a benefit amount lasting for your life or for the life of you and your spouse if you make a joint uh, if you purchase a joint annuity so i just did some quick math um uh, I think on a 65 year old male, um, and the math said, you know, for around three hundred twenty-five thousand uh, dollars, you can purchase a lifetime annuity, getting you around two thousand dollars a month. And so this strategy would be: you take your three thousand of social security income, uh, you get that two thousand monthly income from the annuity, and now all of your living expenses are met through quote unquote guaranteed sources of income. And I put guarantees in quotes uh, because we do have some assumptions there, and they're not necessarily guaranteed. Obviously, we are expecting that social security is not going to reduce benefits on social security beneficiaries the people who have put in money into the uh, system for the last 30 to 40 years we are assuming that they're not going to pull the rug under your feet and, and and lower your benefit i don't think they will but it, you know i can't guarantee that obviously it's politicians we're talking about and then the second you know quasi guarantee we're talking about is the insurance companies um because we do depend the the insurance companies can guarantee that money but we also need the insurance companies to survive um, to be able to pay out those benefits i should note this is really important that insurance companies have insurance on on their uh you know financial solvency so if they were to go under there would be an insurance policy to help pay out all claimants and, and benefits under that uh, si situation i should also note that insurance companies going under is very very infrequent it does not happen often um so it's not really something I expect to happen, but I just, I can't say it's a 100% guarantee. I, I know you understand that. Okay, so you might be listening to this strategy of 3,000 a month from social security, 2,000 from this immediate annuity that you purchased for around 325,000. And you might be saying, Scott, well, wh why, why would I do that versus the traditional approach? Um, and the general idea here in this strategy is that as we all age, we get a little more conservative with our risk tolerance. Um, and we don't want to go through the ups and downs of the stock market to get our living expenses. Because I've, I've had clients say to me, Scott, 
I was 100% comfortable with 100% stocks in my 30s, 40s, and 50s. Wasn't a problem for me at all. But now that I'm in my 60s, boy, and I'm I'm depending on the stock market to, to help me meet all of my living expenses, I, I can't stomach it. It's it's a little too much risk for me because I see, you know, Jerome Powell or Joe Biden or Donald Trump or anyone says something and messes up the markets and, and now I'm, you know, going into into a tizzy about, you know, what's going to happen in the news and what, how that's going to affect the stock market. Um, and am I going to have enough, you know, money uh, in my accounts so that I can, you know, sustain my retirement. So I get, I get that. Um, and it's, it's scientifically proven that we do get more conservative as we age. So with this strategy, what you're doing is you're essentially guaranteeing that you have enough quote unquote stable income, social security, plus uh, the, the guarantee of the insurance company so that you don't have to worry about the stock market to meet your monthly needs. And that fact, knowing that that 5,000 is coming in, regardless of whether the stock market is up or down, it helps relieve you of some of the worry about the volatility of your investments. And instead of you being in a very conservative investment allocation to to make up for your lower risk tolerance, what you're then going to do is you're going to increase the percentage of stocks you have in your portfolio, um, which have historically done you know better than bonds because you have that guaranteed five thousand month coming in from your investment accounts. In other words, since your monthly needs are met from stable sources, it allows you hypothetically to be okay with having a more aggressive investment portfolio so that those investments can grow and outpace inflation, outpace the cost of living, um, and then um, and then you know make sure that those accounts are available to you in your late 70s, 80s, and 90s. And so as you can tell, part of the strategy is math. It's also psychology. It's, it's the human element of finances. Um, but there are some downsides. So that's the basic strategy. I hope that makes sense. There are some significant downsides to this strategy though. The first one, uh, the big one, you know, I mentioned before, um, to get 2000 a month, you're going to need to fork over, you know, 300, 325, depending on your age, gender, and all that, um, to the insurance company, uh, so that you can get that, you know, monthly amount. Now, the problem is if that is such a large percentage of your investment portfolio that you really don't have a lot of money left over for your investment accounts, that takes away a significant amount of this, uh, benefit uh, of the benefit of this strategy. And I don't really think you should, you should pursue that. So, you know, and I'm not trying to knock anyone for how much they were able to save. We all go through different things in, in our journey to, to retirement. And, you know, some people just haven't been able to save as much as others for a variety of reasons. So, uh, you know, there's no shame in that, but let's say you, let's say you have, you and your wife have, you know, at 60, 65, $300,000 in your investment accounts, which is a fantastic amount. Uh, but in that case, if it's going to cost you the entire investment account to, to purchase that annuity, I really don't think this makes sense, sense for you because, um, you know, you're not going to have any money in your invest, investment accounts. And then you're just going to be, um, you're going to be cash poor. And I really don't like that situation. We've really got to maintain a solid amount of liquidity in our retirement accounts uh, for those one-time expenses, random things that come up um, are, that are going to come up in your retirement. So when we purchase that immediate annuity, we have to have enough other money in our investment accounts so that we don't run out of liquidity. We've got to make sure that we have enough in our stock bond and emergency funds for 30 plus years of retirement. Um, we also need to remember that these immediate annuities, when you purchase them, uh, they often do not offer a cost of living uh, adjustment, also known as a COLA. So which means every year that you have this annuity, you lose purchasing power because inflation is going to make the cost of goods and services go up uh, all the time. You also, though, I should note, can add a cost of living adjustment, but that means you're going to have to pay, fork over more money immediately. Uh, to get that extra benefit, so you you can add that on, but it's going to be it's going to make that 325 number higher uh, than what it would have been without the cost of living adjustment. You also have to realize that when you give up that lump sum of money to purchase the immediate annuity, that's a really conservative financial move, um, and it and it means that if your por uh, portfolio of stocks and bonds does really well as it has historically over the last you know 90 to 100 years, you're most likely to under perform those returns with the immediate annuity. Um, but that could be a trade-off you're willing to accept if you have that really conservative risk tolerance going into retirement 
And if you just look at all the facts, look at all the data and say, you know what, I'm willing to give up those returns so that I have all of the money I need coming from Social Security and my you know immediate annuity in retirement. So it could make sense, but it could be a bad math um, idea. And then finally, when you pass away, you also have to know that these annuities are going to end. So there are, as I said before, there's individual annuities and there's also joint and survivor annuities. So a joint and survivor annuity, let's say husband and wife, husband passes first, which is just, just excuse me, statistically the most likely scenario, husband passes first, the wife will continue receiving that income with the joint and survivor annuity. When she passes away though, uh, that annuity is gone. The kids will not receive it. Your charities will not receive it. Um, and, and so that's kind of the end of the road with that. So if you have money that you want to leave to kids, to charities, to whatever, you've got to make sure that all of your other accounts are going to meet your, you know, charitable giving needs in that respect, because these annuities are not going to do that. So, um, yeah. And so th those are some of the really big downsides. And that's pretty much all I have for this strategy. Again, I do not currently recommend it. I'm not going to be recommending it to clients. It's a little more conservative than I like. Um, I think a boring, well-diversified, low-cost portfolio um, has historically done better than this strategy. Can't guarantee the future, of course. Um, I think it's going to get you solid returns while maintaining complete flexibility on your assets. That flexibility and liquidity in retirement is so important. We've got to have a pocket cash in case life changes one time event comes up and and you just need money if it's all locked away in annuities and social security benefits there's no there's no way to tap it and you're just in at home equity there's no way to tap it unless you want to do a HELOC reverse mortgage and that's just that's a tough spot to be in um and so if we can avoid it I, i'd like to and then also you know it's going to take away money that you can leave to your kids if that's something that you want to do so i will be sticking with my boring traditional low-cost index fund portfolio but if you're dead set on increasing your monthly living expenses through more stable sources um, i really do think you should check this out um, and see if if it works for you i don't sell these um, i'm not you know an insurance agent so you could uh, play around on the web and and get some quotes and and think about it a little bit uh, but let me know if you have any questions about this strategy in the comments below and i will see you next time bye